Hello there again guys and welcome back to the channel. Well, we're out in the shop again today working on the Enterprise refit today. We're going to be working on the shuttle bay, getting a lot more detail added to that, putting some decals on and things like that, so it's going to be pretty fun. And uh, we've also got a question that was sent in to me from Modelman28 uh, from the YouTube videos that uh, asked about how I do some of the filling and putty work uh, to, to fix seams on the models that I built. So we're going to actually do a video uh, response to that here on the bench and show you that rather than just talk about it we'll show you how we do it and I hope you guys like that so I uh, really appreciate the questions coming in I'll do my best to try to do that for you here on the channel from time to time and uh, we'll actually show you how we do that so uh, what I want to talk about real quick is uh, just another thank you for the big response on the model building service and the uh, painting supplies that I'll be uh, offering here pretty soon the paint sets and uh, Cosmic Colors is going to launch pretty soon, so I hope you guys uh, will check that out. I've got a couple samples going out to a few of my friends from Sci-Fi Model Action, and they're going to try them out on some other stuff. I think you're going to be really pleased with it. So we've got Steven, Brian, and uh, Eric that uh, have requested some model build-ups. I've got a bunch of requests. You guys are the first ones in the pipeline. Uh, Steven, your... Uh, 1350 scale classic enterprise will be the first one you'll get to see that uh, built up right here on the channel and uh, we're doing the full-on build on that one we're doing all the electronics the spinning bassards the photo etch uh, everything that's gonna be a really nice really nice model when it's finished up it'll uh, we'll show different segments of that as we go in between our regular stuff here on the channel so I hope you enjoy watching that and again I really appreciate it uh, I want to uh, say a special thanks to Ralph out there from Tenet Controls uh, Ralph uh, has been a great guy, a big help to uh, me with all the electronics that I buy from him. And uh, his, they used to offer a model building service and they, they are no longer doing that there, but he's going to be sending over a lot of his uh, uh, people that contact him about that my way. So I really appreciate that, Ralph. I'll do a good job for you. I know the customers will be happy. So, okay guys, we're going to go over to the bench now and get going. We've got the shuttle bay here and as I said, we'll do a little bit of work on some seams. We're actually going to do the Arboretum windows on our secondary hull of the refit and show you how we get those worked in. So that'll be perfect for a, a nice uh, demonstration of how to do some seam and filling work. So we'll see you on the bench, guys, and it's coming right up. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, so here we are. We're back on the bench again like usual and time to get going again. And what you see in front of you is I have the uh, secondary hull section of the... Uh, the refit model kit there and if you can see in the shot I'll zoom in on that for you here just a little bit uh, I've got this uh, Arboretum window that I'm working in on the side here and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk about some seam and putty filling work that I do and also talk about what I use to do some of this work now let me swing around the camera here and get closer uh, to start with there are two types of primary putties that are out there for filling uh, there are products from company called Squadron Products, which is this white putty here, and then there's also this 3M Bondo uh, red spot putty that a lot of people use in the hobby. Both of them work very well. Uh, for uh, color matching purposes on this one, I chose to use to go with the white putty, and so we'll be working with this one primarily. They both uh, have good properties. Uh, the Squadron tends to dry a little bit harder than the, uh, and is more crack resistant than the uh, 3M. So, uh, but it does take a little bit longer to dry and it is uh, a little bit harder to sand. And the 3M is nice for filling in like imperfections in your paintwork, little pits and things like that. And uh, uh, some of the minor seams, but you don't want to use any of the 3M stuff on any seams or gaps that might have a little flexing, flexing action going on, like I said, because it's kind of soft and it, uh, uh, it will crack if you uh, apply it on an area like that. This stuff here is a little bit stronger. And then for larger gaps and things like that in models, there's also another product out there called Evercoat, which I've been using for years and years. Uh, I work in the automotive body uh, industry, and uh, that's something that's been out there a long time. It's been developed to work with plastic parts, and uh, it has a little bit of flexibility to it. It's a two-part uh, system similar to Bondo, but it has much better properties than Bondo. It's, it's more creamy than Bondo. It's easier to spread around, and it dries quite a bit faster, and it's much easier to sand. And usually when it dries, it doesn't have any of those little micro pits in it like Bondo does. And uh, that's out there as well. So those are just a couple of things. So Model Man 28, let's talk about your question here a little bit. And uh, uh, let's show you what we're doing here. Now, on this particular part here, 
Uh, this is a photo etch part that I've laid in here that fits in this uh, little slot here uh, where the window is. Now on the other side here it's been finished and you can see how nice that turns out. It's, it's, it's flawless. It has no seam or edge and everything on there. And what we do here is we uh, put, uh, we, I glued this in first with a little bit of CA and I used a piece of masking tape uh, to put across here so that when I put this piece in place from behind it would be perfectly flush with the hole here. And then I put a couple of coats of this uh, squadron putty over the top. And uh, you're wondering what the acetone is for. Well before this putty dries, uh, acetone will break this stuff down and uh, I'll, I'll put a little bit of acetone on a uh, towel, a microfiber towel, not a paper towel because paper towels tend to leave uh, residue and they collect and they kind of smear all over the model. And so uh, using it on a towel, I put a little bit on that towel and I basically wiped it off, wiped the excess uh, putty off so that that cuts down on the amount of sanding that I need to do. You don't want that stuff on there really, really thick. And uh, also when you add the acetone, it actually helps to make this stuff dry a little bit faster so you can start sanding it uh, a lot sooner than normal. Uh, probably about 20-30 minutes of sitting after you've wiped it down and it's ready to sand. If you're sanding it and it starts to clog your paper, you start seeing big chunks of it coming off, it's not dry enough. When you sand it, it should leave just a nice powder coming off of there. So what I've done is I've applied these uh, this Squadron Products putty around these little areas here and we had a little bit extra that got in the window frames. So I just used a uh, a hobby knife before it was completely dry and hard and I just went in there and scraped all that out of there. Uh, you want to do it before it gets hard because these little frames are kind of fragile and you could bend one of them if you're trying to you know gouge that stuff off of there kind of hard. Uh, so do it before it gets completely hardened up. And now all we have to do here is sand and so what I'm going to start with is I've got two different uh, types of paper here. I've got some uh, 320 grit wet dry paper and I've got some 600 grit wet dry, dry paper which we'll finalize with. We're going to start with this 320 and what you want to do is use a little bit of water with this so uh, if you get one of these little uh, pump spray bottles and have that handy that really helps out. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of water on here to start with and a little bit of water on my paper and I'm going to start sanding this down. I'll try to keep this in frame for you here. And you don't want to be super aggressive, you just want to keep your hand on there nice and flat and uh, start working it down. And you'll see that uh, as you're, as you're uh, cutting through this, you'll begin to see it all level out nice and smooth for you. And this may take one or two uh, tries. And what I may do here is, uh, once this is all sanded out and I like it nice and flush and everything, there may be a tiny little gap in there still and if there is what I'll do is I'll use some of that 3M putty to fill that in because that stuff is really good for filling in really small imperfections and things. But you can see there's the, uh, the water coming off of this is colored and that's the material. This uh, using a little bit of water uh, also helps it from getting really dusty and, and uh, get it, making a mess all over. So uh, we're going to add a little bit more water now here and every so often we'll stop and just kind of run our fingers over this and feel it and you're you're feeling for any kind of edges or bumps in this and it's already smoothing out really nice for us. This 320 paper will cut through this stuff pretty fast. You don't want to sand more than you have to though because you're sanding off the details of your model. You know, I've got these little grid lines and things on here. We're kind of staying away from those. And if you want to, you can also add some masking tape on here uh, to protect that area from getting sanded if you're really worried about it. So, we're just working this down here. And I'm sanding really lightly when I go across these window frames because I don't want to push or, you know, dent them or, or make them out of shape in any way. So this is working out really good. Okay, what I'll do now is kind of rinse this off. And sometimes the water will fool you. I'm running out of water in my bottle here, but sometimes this will fool you when it's wet. Let me get on the other side of the camera here. I've got to grab a paper towel. Uh, so what I like to do is dry it off and then run my hand over it again to make sure that uh, in reality it is nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and do that. Just be careful not to hang this on any of the uh, uh, corners here or anything and bend anything. So I'm really liking how that's feeling right now. I don't think I'm going to need to sand it any further uh, uh, with the uh, 320. So what I'm going to do now is I can see that there's a couple little uh, small areas here, I don't know if they show for you, but there are just a couple little indents in that still, a couple little imperfections. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, dry this a little bit and I'm going to use my heat gun. I'll do that off camera here, but I'll dry this a little bit and I'm going to come back in and put some of that red spot putty on there very thinly and that'll take care of the final imperfections in that. We'll sand that out and then we'll final sand this with 600 and we'll be ready to prime this and have it ready for paint. So we'll be back with that in just a second. Okay guys, well I'm back now and I've got this all dried up and ready to go and I've got out my uh, my red putty here and let's go ahead and just put a little bit on this and again I'm not gonna go crazy I'm just putting a little bit on this because we see that we've got a little bitty couple imperfections right around the edges there and they're mainly pits they're not high spots they're low spots and we want to fill those in and uh, I don't want to gob this on there like I said you just you just you can't make everything perfect on the first try sometimes it takes one or two times at it and you can see I've got that on there now and what I'll show you now is this is the uh, <coughs> excuse me this is the type of towel that I use for a lot of this uh, work this is called a detailers towel or microfiber towel you can find these pretty much anywhere and uh, they're nice because they do not leave any lint of any kind on anything and that's why detailers prefer to use them now I'm pouring a little bit of acetone on this and before this putty is completely dry what I'm going to do is I just go on this just like this and just uh, wipe across this and what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the edges down so that it, it it's almost kind of feathered onto the uh, surface there and it really is going to help you a whole bunch on um, you can see how that cuts through that really nice that's going to help you a whole bunch on your uh, final sanding where you'll, you'll cut down on a lot of your sanding time. Now you can see there, just like I talked about, we've got a couple little excess globs that are in the uh, window frames. And before that's dry, I'm just going to go in here and get, get that out of there with my hobby knife. I'm trying to stay not blocking the camera here for you. And uh, we'll just go ahead and knock all that off there before it's dry. And uh, this stuff is a little softer than, than the uh, squadron is, so if you got it on there and it got dry, you could probably get it off there pretty easy. But the squadron stuff, like I said, is kind of hard and uh, it might be kind of difficult to get it off the windows. So let's just go ahead and wipe across this now. We've got a couple little strands still hanging on in there. Okay, those are pretty well cleaned up. And I can see I wiped a little too much right there. So I'm going to go and uh, just put a tiny little bit of this back on there. We'll just go ahead and let that dry and we'll just sand that out of there because it's being kind of stubborn. Like I said, it might take uh, two or three times of doing this before you get it to where you like it. But um, there you go. Now that's going to take, I'll probably use my heat gun here a little bit and help that dry. So that's going to dry in about 15 or 20 minutes and then we'll be ready to sand that. So we'll come back here in just a minute after that's dried a little while and show you how that's coming out. Okay guys, so here we are again, and you can see we've got a little bit of uh, drying time on this now. And uh, things are looking pretty good, so we're ready to start sanding on that. And so what I'll do now is I'll go back with some more of this 320 and we'll start knocking this down. I'm going to pull back here a little bit wide so I make sure I can stay in the camera for you. And uh, let's go. We've got, got some little work to do on this. Now, uh, again, we're just going to lightly sand this just the same way we did before. And... Um, and this time around we should have a pretty nice result in the end where everything should be ready to go and I'll hit this finally with some 600. I'm just knocking down the high spots here. And you can see how lightly I'm sanding this and with the water how nice that uh, breaks that down and how fast that works. A lot of people should try wet sanding a little bit more. I notice a lot of people don't, don't use this in the hobby and it really does make a big difference. Um, it keeps your paper cleaner and it just it saves a whole lot of time for your sanding so uh, something you might want to check out uh, the paper that you use for wet sanding is of course like I showed you especially designed for it so it won't fall apart uh, it can stand the water regular sandpaper when you start putting water on it it's going to um, start deteriorating on you and coming apart so okay we've got that looking pretty good with the 320 we're going to switch to the uh, 600 now as you can see here and we'll put a little water on this paper and we're just gonna basically what we're doing here is we're using this 600 to get rid of any sanding scratches or marks that might be on that and that's looking pretty good 
as you can see my decal that I put on here is going to go away that's okay because um, I mainly did that to show everybody how the decals that I'm working on went on this model and uh, these little areas here are were just straight lines that are going to be really easy and I'll just go back and repaint those on by hand after I'm done here so we're not worried about that okay we've got this pretty well worked out I'll use my uh, paper towel here to get this all dried off again and we're just going to give it a nice little feel here again and things feel pretty darn good I think it's going to come out pretty nice now <clears throat> once you spray your primer on there that will reveal any uh, imperfections that are still in it and if you see any you can just go back and uh, apply a little bit more putty right over top of your primer that won't hurt at all and just work it again once more as I keep mentioning uh, You got to have a little bit of patience with this stuff, but I mean we've only spent it took me about 10 minutes to glue that window in I've spent just this time here on camera getting this so you can see that uh, This is not very difficult at all now uh, I'll just talk a little bit about you can say, use this, the same technique when we go to start putting these uh, uh, pieces together on this ship you've got these nice little seam lines and, and a lot of people lose those on that model and have trouble with it so what I'll be doing and I'll show that a little bit later when I go to glue these together um, we're gonna make sure we're gonna use our acetone to uh, to clean all these edges so that we don't have any paint contaminating our glue joints that's the number one reason why a glue joint will fail when it's contaminated covered with paint and the, and the glue can not actually bond with the plastic so then when you start doing your sanding and, and flexing it and holding on to it you you, wind, you wonder why your uh, filler is cracking and things like that. It's because you don't have a solid joint in there. So once all that's nice and solid and you glue it together and you apply this filler like I'm talking about, you use that acetone again. You're going to come back and wipe off all that excess right away before it dries. And you'll have a nice uh, smooth line in there that you'll have to do very minimal sanding on to get that to come out nice and clean. And I think you guys will be uh, surprised at how good that works when we start showing that here uh, when we get to that part of the model. So... All right, I'm going to use my heat gun here a little bit, and we're going to make sure this is good and dry. A good old trusty heat gun that you guys are used to. Okay, I'm not getting this too close, as you can see. I'm just knocking the moisture out of there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply some white primer on this. And I'm going to apply it very thinly and then dry each coat in between. You don't want to pile that on there either. So let me get uh, some paper set up here so I don't spray all over my bench and we'll uh, start applying some primer. Be right back with that. Okay, so here we are again. We're ready to start putting some primer on this. I'm just getting it shaken up really good. Now this is the type of primer I like to use. There's different colors of this available. This is made by Transtar. I've talked about it before. This is the white and I'll be choosing, I like to choose uh, colors sometimes that are uh, matched up with what my base colors are going to be and uh, this stuff I like because it covers nice and thick and it's very sandable and it leaves very little texture on anything when you're uh, spraying it so let's go ahead and start pl putting some of this on again just very very light coats like that and then we're going to dry between each step here so that we don't um, start piling it on there and getting it thick and getting it wet where it's going to take forever for it to dry and again using the heat gun again just staying back from my work not getting uh, too close where I'm going to melt anything or actually cause blisters in the paint I'm back about a good eight inches or so and you can see we're blending this right in I'm going to go ahead and cover up that whole area there I'm going to rework that whole thing off. And what you can do afterwards is I'll be sanding this down with some uh, uh, 600 grit paper. And that's going to get rid of any of the texture or anything that's in that and make that all nice and smooth for us. And this primer actually acts like a micro filler as well. Uh, good good uh, high quality primer will do that. So any very small imperfections uh, that you see it will fill those in you can apply a coat of that sand it and apply another coat and sand it again if you want okay so we've got this pretty much dried up now yeah 
I'll hang my heat gun back up here. And I can see by looking at it that uh, the surface is really, really nice. But what we've got is we've got a little bit of debris in these window frames here. And I'm just going to clean those up a little bit. A little bit on the edges there. we got a little bit going on right up in here. After you remove that, you can just go back and touch this up again with a little bit more paint. Okay, guys, now how does that look to you? I think that turned out pretty darn well. Let me get you a little closer to it. As you can see, my light's kind of washing it out a little bit here, but see if I can tilt it a little bit. But as you can see, that's in there perfectly flush, no seams, no gaps. It's beautiful. It's just perfect. It's exactly like the one on the other side here. And uh, so that came out really, 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 really good. So, Model Man 28, I hope that helped you out. Uh, and that technique can be used on just about all your seam and, and filling work. Um, now, uh, I get asked that question a lot too as far as when I paint, you know, I paint all my parts and then I assemble and then how do I come back and paint them later? I'm going to show you a little quick something here. Uh, this is an old painter's trick called back taping. And let's say that you, uh, you have this all assembled and you're going to wind up filling and painting this little seam right here. Well, when you, when you do your actual seam work, you're going to lay this tape on here like that to keep your putty work down and you don't want it to spread all over the model that you've already done the nice paint work on. Let's say we have the top half here too. You do the same thing. Sand all that down, smooth it out, use the acetone like I talked about, and then pull your tape. And when you get ready to spray that, uh, you're going to take your tape and you're going to roll it just like this. You're going to take the edges and tuck them, put the uh, backing against each other like that, and lay this down on here. Well, let me get it right here didn't hang on didn't hang together for me you're basically making a sort of a little cylinder and you're gonna lay this on here try to keep it you know fairly close to the work uh, and go down and make sure this inside edge here is all nice and secure and flat onto the model and then you're gonna roll this back up like that and just to secure the edge it's not cooperating with me here too well um, but you secure the edge like that And so what you wind up with here is you have this, this rolled edge, if you guys can see that. And so what that does, now when you paint, uh, using an airbrush is what my method is, you don't want to aim that airbrush right up into that, that gap right there. Uh, you don't want a lot of paint to pile up. You're going you're gonna to spray this way, like straight at it. Cover up your painted, your repaired area or your seam or whatever. And when you pull this uh, tape off, you're going to see that the paint has blended in there really nice and not left a hard line. Uh, a hard line is what you get when you lay a piece of tape flat on its edge like this and uh, spray and then pull it off. You're going to see a line because of the differences in the level of paint. And that's an old painter's trick that people have done on painting cars for years when they do blends and things like that. Uh, if you do get a little bit of a line there, you can always go back and real lightly using some like 1200 or 1500 grit sandpaper, you can use water again and just wet sand that and smooth that all out. Once you put your clear coat on top of that, whether it's dull or gloss, that'll hide all that. So that's just another little trick for that and that's how I, that's how I go back and paint all of my uh, seams and everything after I'm done uh, uh, painting all these parts and after I assemble the model. I've got asked that question quite a bit so I hope that helped you guys out. And uh, you can use smaller tape, you know, like I said, that was a big piece of tape that I used. So. Okay, guys, well, let's move on over to the shuttle bay now, and uh, we'll, st we'll take a look at what we're doing with that. We're, we're putting in our photo etch parts, and we're uh, doing some decal work on that, adding some details. So we'll see you there in just a second. Alrighty then, well, here we are. We're set up now and ready to start doing some work on the shuttle bay. And you can see that uh, what I've been doing here is uh, our crystal clear has all dried up real nice in these windows and that we worked on earlier and I've got all these little nice photo etch girders that have been installed on the top and the bottom rows there you can see it on these parts and uh, what I'm going to be doing now is adding some of these decals uh, from the model kit that go in and uh, detail all these little uh, cargo bay container areas and some other things and uh, we'll be doing that 
And what I wanted to mention, too, is I have a good friend uh, from Sci-Fi Model Action, Daniel Klein, who's a really good modeler himself, that sent me all these extra decals here, which are uh, for detailing the shuttle bay. These are uh, nice little squares that'll go in on these areas that we see right here and some other little markings. We'll be cutting those out and putting those in. And then he was gracious enough to send me some decals that he made himself uh, that are for uh, one of these I'll be using inside of the... Uh, let me grab that part real quick. We're going to be doing uh, our little view screen here inside of the... Uh, well, I don't know if these are going to be small enough, but uh, we're going to do something with that. I may have to scan that and shrink that down a little bit. But we're going to put one of these little Federation flags in here on the view screen and the uh, rec deck. And then he's also sent me a beautiful set here that he made for the uh, Vulcan shuttle, uh, which is has all the nice, really detailed markings on it. And then another set here for the uh, travel pod, which actually has a nice high-resolution picture of Kirk and Scotty in the window there. That's going to really be cool. So that's going to add a lot of life to this uh shuttle bay and here's a couple more decals that he's got for some of the other smaller shuttles that we'll be putting on as well so that all worked out really cool and appreciate that Daniel and so let's go here what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, start off with uh, I think these go on this row right here so let's go ahead and dip these in our water and get those going I'll spray a little bit of water on that to get that so our decals will uh, slide around on there really nice for us. It'll take just a second here for these to come loose. Now I like to cut all these out and leave them on the film there and just slide them all off one by one on each one of these parts. Let me get you zoomed in here just a little bit, see what, what we're working with. Get these other uh, decals out of the way. <clears throat> and that's going to make this look nicer. When we get all this decal work done here, what we're going to do is we're going to then uh, cut out our photo etch parts for the railings that go all the way around this and we're going to paint those yellow and put those on. And that's going to brighten that up really good. Now again I chose some contrasting colors for this uh, because I want a lot of light in there and you can see that's going to look really nice once that all, that's all put together. We've got a nice decal that goes here and another one that goes in the back area here and we've got these uh, turbo lifts which uh, I'll be showing you that on the next video probably but I'm going to paint those and uh, we're going to do our scraping on those to get them transparent so we can light those uh, with some blue LEDs and get some nice uh, lighting effects on that. And uh, that's going to work out pretty good. Okay, our decals should be ready here. And we'll just start working these on one by one. Just using my little hobby knife here, I'm just going to slide each one of them off and into their little spot. And having a little bit of that water in there helps you to move it around a little bit. <clears throat> I'm just going to work them in one by one kind of roughly and then I'll go back and straighten them all out here. They seem to fit in there pretty well. The nice thing about these factory decals is that they already pre-cut and they slide off the sheet and you don't have to trim much on them. The uh, aftermarket decals, you've got to cut them out pretty much exact in order to get them to uh, not have excess uh, decal film on them. So that's kind of nice. Let me start off on this first one here. Kind of a little awkward. Oh, I was wanting to move around on me. I think I should have taped this thing down or something. Let me do that real quick, and that's going to help me out a whole bunch here. Just made a little loop of masking tape there, and we'll just slap this on top of it. And <clears throat> that should help me out a bunch. Okay, let's try it again. Whoops. Okay, guys, here we go. All right, two more to go.
Okay, we've got those down in there pretty good. Now I'll just kind of straighten them out a little bit here. Get them tucked down in there. And we'll use our handy paper towel again here and get that excess water out of there. I think they're in there pretty nice and straight. This one here, I can see the corner is wanting to stick up on it a little bit here. Oops, I had it and then it jumped on me. Decals are fun, aren't they? Okay. All right, well there you can see we've got those in there and doesn't that make that look a lot nicer? It just uh, adds a whole bunch of life to that. And so what I'll do now is I'll dry this off completely and I'll hit that with a little bit of my decal bonder and that'll seal those in there. And then to get rid of the gloss that that leaves, we'll spray that down with a little bit of our uh, tester's dull coat. And that part will be finished up. There's a little railing part that goes on this. Uh, you want to remember that uh, little tip here that when you're doing this work on this with these photo etch parts, once all these shuttle girders are in, uh, these girders on the top of the ceiling, that uh, you can't slide that part down on there from the top side like it was meant to be. So you're going to have to attach it on one of your sides of this piece before you attach it to the floor. Otherwise you won't be able to get that down in there. So some of you may have ran into that before, but just a little heads up on that. Okay, what I'm going to do is keep on working here. I'm going to start putting more decals on the sides and things like that. I'll come back and show you a little update and show you how everything's looking. Then we're going to get ready to paint our photo etch railings and put those on. Be right back. Stay tuned. Hi there, guys, and welcome back. What we're doing now is just giving you a little look at the uh, shuttle bay. I've just got this all kind of mocked up and put together here, but all the little detailing is done inside this thing now. And I just thought I'd give you a little look around at it. Let's see if I can get you a little closer here. Yeah, really, really happy with how this turned out. I think my contrasting colors in there are really going to be nice. And um, once we get some light in there, I think that's going to really show up well. And things just turned out really good. So we've got all of our photo etch stuff in there, all of our decals. There's still the little uh, uh, turbo lift parts, so you can see with those holes there in the middle of the floor that go in. And in the next episode, I'll show you the work I'm going to do on those. I'm going to do some uh, light blocking on that, paint that, and then I'm going to scrape those, the clear areas on those, so that we'll get some nice light going through that and get that nice blue effect that we saw on the movie. But uh, that's going to be a wrap, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be back for part eight in a couple of days. Uh, we're going to start actually doing some assembly work on the model itself, some of the hull pieces. And uh, so we covered a lot today. We got our Arboretum windows put in. We got the shuttle bay finished up. So... Uh, I'll have to do a little bit of modification on that for my lighting on the bottom, but uh, things are looking really good. I've got the ceiling painted for it too, and I'll show you that in the next video as well. So, Anyway, that's going to do it, guys. Take care out there. Happy modeling, and we'll see you next time, guys.